Welcome. Welcome to the Three Principles Global Community Webinar. The Three Principles Global Community, or 3PGC, is a nonprofit organization that is committed to bringing an understanding of the three principles as introduced by Sydney Banks to people throughout the world. And um, really delighted to have Azul here. Um, Azul is a, a transformational coach, wife, mother, literary translation person, uh, technology wizard, as we found out today. And uh, she's going to share with us. And as well, take as much time as you want. I don't have a, a time that I have to leave. So since we started late, if you can go as long as you want and speak, and whenever you're ready for questions, you can just let us know. So welcome. Thank you. Thank you, Tom. For such a lovely introduction. Tom and I, we, we know each other from our training with, with Rohini, with Rohini Rose in the Rewarding Guide training. So we were peers in this journey. And this webinar is, every webinar is important, but this webinar for me was special because uh, when I joined it, when I found this understanding, I have watched so many webinars in the 3 pgc and they were a source of knowledge and trying to understand. And so I feel truly honored to be here today sharing what I've seen. So I thought about what could be the most useful for all of you uh, today. What what can I share? And, and I'm only a master of my own experience. So what I'm going to share is just what I have in my heart. I'm a little bit under the weather too, I have to let you know. So if you see me like slow, it's about that. So I wanted to talk about rediscovering our, our real nature. Because for me, this journey was about rediscovering who I really am. During my, my childhood, teenager years, young adult, I have been through a lot of physical abuse, psychological abuse, And there was no intervention of somebody else, you know, like there was no help in in one sense, except the police a couple of times. So I grew up, I wouldn't say trauma, I would say traumatic experiences because lots were happening all the time. And I have been also through many kinds of therapies. Like in Argentina, it's very common that you go to therapy for some reason, everybody goes to therapy. And, and I have been through gestalt therapy, psychoanalysis, traditional therapy, everything since I was 18. Many therapists told me that according to my life story, what would what they would expect is that I couldn't have a, a normal life that I would be living in some kind of mental health hospital or something like that. Which is not something useful to say to a patient, right? Because if you have a story about, oh my God, I'm broken, I'm damaged, and somebody with, you know, they study that and they tell you that, it's like not really helpful. But I know that they were meaning well. I was sure 100%, I was broken. I was less than other people. I had less value, I wasn't enough. I was told that many, many times. But I managed to create a life where I can fit in society and sustain a job and sustain a, a healthy relationship after several attempts that weren't really healthy. But I thought that was my identity. This happened to me. Therefore, I'm going to try my best. But, you know, I'm kind of half human being, not a complete self. And when I 
hear somebody saying, you can drop your past, you can drop your story. I always thought, yeah, that's so easy to say, you know? It's not that I'm dragging my past, it's that past keeps visiting me all the time and I'm like in the fence. There's nothing I could do. Now the truth was that when I started seeing what the three principles were showing us that we create our experiences through our thinking, that we feel our thinking, At first I was like, nah, like yeah, that thing that happened, I didn't create it. Not at all. I have a list, full of list of exceptions. How rude you would say something like that to somebody like me. But then slowly and being in the conversation and keeping here, something inside of me started to understand not here, like in my heart. There was a sense of remembering who I really was. And I started noticing stuff. I started noticing that the past wasn't a thing that was just suddenly showing up. But I did have an habit, habit of thinking, of retelling myself the terrible things that happened with different lights. I started seeing how I was attached to what happened because I thought that was my identity. Who is a soul? A soul was a, a woman that had a terrible childhood that she doesn't trust in her own value, that she's weak, she's not very smart, not very good but she will try harder. And truly one day I was able to see, oh my God, this is a story I'm telling myself. I'm constantly telling myself who I am. It's a narrative that I'm keep having with me. I learned that, ha that narrative. But now I'm a grown up, I'm an adult. What's under that narrative? I had my my seasons previous to this understanding or no, a soul is a smart woman. Uh, she's a good human being. She deserves good things in her life, blah, 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 blah. But that wasn't really useful because I was trying to have a conversation, convincing my thinking that I was good enough. What happened for me was that when I was able to watch from certain distance the thinking in action, the narrative that I'm putting out there, I started being curious about who I am when I'm not in that narrative. What's my real identity? And I think some of you have seen in Facebook, I posted a picture of me as a child. I think I was around five years old. That's a picture I have about who I really am. I'm touch, I'm working, creative, looking forward to have a life that is full. Now that child, it's not that I have to heal my inner child. That child never left. But I was asleep in the illusion that my thinking was the truth. I was my thoughts. And when I could take a step back and see, oh my God, this is just all my thinking telling the same story. I was able to look in a certain, in a different direction. I was able to feel my feelings without adding to the story.
during a long time, I thought resilience was like, you have a terrible experience and you endure, you know, and you like move forward. But now I'm realizing that you have a traumatic experience and then you go back to your original shape, to your real nature. I discovered several, several habits of thinking. Well, the first one was the one that I'm telling you, retelling this story mentally. And that happened, I could be, I don't know, cooking. And then I saw something while I'm cooking, I don't know, cutting an onion and seeing a knife or whatever, and then boom, a memory will show up, right? I remember something traumatic. In the past, I would like see all, the whole scene again, feel my heart beating fast, be scared. And then more thinking will show up. Nobody will understand this. Nobody understands what is was living in a family like that, blah, 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 blah. And then I create a whole day of that, grieving again of what happened. Now, sometimes, same thing happens. And I'm noticing, oh, okay, I'm going, this is what's happening. I'm retelling myself this story again. I know that story. I can let that go. When I say I can let that go, I'm not saying I can let go of this story and will never show up. I'm just saying that I'm choosing at that moment to bring my attention to something else. Or, or let's say that in a better way. I'm choosing to not focus my attention in that thought. I'm letting that thought just pass by, go by. In the same way that, you know, when you are like waiting for somebody that you love to arrive home, um, for some reason they are late, uh, quite late, and then you have this thought that, what if they had an accident? You know, it's like, dun, 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 dun. And you just say, nah. And you continue with your life. It's the same thing that we can do with every thought, every thought. So instead of trying to fix the image that I had of myself, trying to find a new identity, it's more about stopping believing in every story I'm telling myself and waiting in the unknown to know, to know me, to know who I really am. How many stories do we have about ourselves? I am not really smart or I don't know, I'm clumsy, I'm not good at sports, I'm not blah, 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 blah. For example, the story of I'm not good at sports is the one that I, I used to have. Um, how can a kid, a, a scared kid at school be good at sports when he's freaking out about what's happening at home? So what happens? I would be clumsy, I would be messy. You know, when they choose teams, nobody will choose me because I'm terrible with doing anything sporty. Then the thought says, oh yeah, it's true. You know, nobody's choosing you, blah, blah, blah. So I continue a circle of believing my own story. Now, I don't know how I am at sports when I'm relaxed and happy and confident in the place where I am when I'm trusting the people that surround me, I don't know. What I'm trying to show with this example is that in my journey, I have moved from, oh no, I'm terrible. No, I'm, I'm really good at it. To just remove both options because it's just a narrative. I'm being in the unknown and saying, hey, let's see. Let's see who I am. Who I am. Let's see how I can I do this thing or that thing. And, and, and you start getting lots of surprises, lots of surprises. 
oh my god i'm good at this oh my god i'm not really good at this and i don't even enjoy it i don't i don't care so who are we when we are not our past and those stories created habits of thinking another habit that i had was i'm the problem if there is an issue i'm the problem fair thought even today we couldn't join the zoom call i thought oh my god i have the time wrong you know i i i don't know i found the link wrong it was, was it today like i had a lot of stories in my head and i can catch that habit quickly because of the way it feels It doesn't feel aligned. It doesn't feel peaceful. Sometimes we see truth that is not kind, but we can see that truth with peace. That's my inner compass. How does it make me feel? Because I feel my thinking. If I feel in distress, that feeling is letting me know, hey, this is what you're doing with your thinking. It is not, this is what you're doing, what you're thinking. Okay, so I did a very bad job, so I'm guilty. No, 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 no. It's just about knowing. And I can follow that feeling, that sensation back to calmness. And then check again, what is it that I have in front of me? The more I notice my habits of thinking, the more I can look in a different direction and they start fading away. The more I'm connected with my heart, the more I know. I mean, actually, you can't be more connected with your heart because we are always connected. The less distracted you are, the more you will notice. It is not that I found a a solution to my traumatic stories is that I found a place of not being at war with what happened, not believing the narrative. You know, as, as the children are like wonderful observers, but very poor um, at like they are not good interpreters. So we all think, hey, this is happening, it's me, it's my issue, I made it. And we carry that interpretation and a narrative when we are grown up. But it's not something that we need to work with it. It's just something that we can notice, hey, I'm, I'm doing that again. Just drop it, it's okay. It's the same thing that happens when you move from one house to, a, let's say not a house, but let's say that you have more objects in your kitchen and you usually like um, keep the pants, I don't know, at the left side and now you move it to the right side. And for a couple of days or maybe weeks, you're going to go to your left to take a pan and you will notice, oh, okay, no, not here. And then you will go to the right. And at first it's going to be clumsy but then it will become natural. That's the, one, the other thing that I have seen that it was really, really helpful for me. What is familiar is not always natural. What was familiar for me was like blaming myself, being extremely judgmental with myself, being cruel. And when I, and I'm still in the process of stopping doing that, of noticing when I'm doing that and just releasing that, it feels messy. It doesn't feel familiar, but it feels natural. And that takes me to the second thing that I wanted to share with all of you. My, what I'm exploring at this moment of, of my life is the journey of self-kindness. These are words that I have heard many, 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 many times. 
would you say to a friend that you love the same thing that you're telling to yourself? And I always thought, yeah, yeah, no, I wouldn't. Uh... But through this, I started looking at, hey, don't I deserve the same level of love and compassion that I have for my friends, for my family, for my coaching clients? Would I allow somebody to speak like this to somebody that I love? Would that I love allow somebody to speak like that to a stranger that I barely know on the streets? I wouldn't. Now, why I was allowing that treatment to myself? It was a habit. I wasn't really noticing it. Then I started to see it more and more in subtle ways. And I'm noticing that, well, I don't need to do that. And I go back to find a loving response to myself. What if we close the gap between how we treat others and how we treat ourselves? And we treat ourselves all the time with the same love and compassion. It really doesn't need an effort because love is part of our nature. So I realized, oh my God, this is not about being kind to myself. This is about stopping being cruel. It's not about having homework now. Now I'm going to be kind with myself. New job. No, no, no. It's about just living my life and noticing. I will notice, I will feel it. And as soon as I feel it, I can drop that. All have it. It's very, I mean, for me, I feel a, a huge relief seeing that it's all about stop doing stuff that doesn't work for us. Stop believing that I am my thinking. Stop ignoring the way I feel that lets me know everything. Stop validating cruel thoughts about me. Stop being so judgmental. And that opens up possibilities to just be, live our lives moment by moment. So that's my invitation for all of you to drop stories that doesn't serve you, to notice how you feel at every moment because I will guide you and to allow the kindness that you have in your heart to be directed to you too. Because compassion should include us too. Nobody's left behind. And by living our life, being loving with ourselves, besides loving, being loving with others, that's another way of spreading this understanding. It's a way to help the world. So thank you everybody for being here. I hope this hasn't been a ramble and I'm here open for questions and comments and complaints and whatever you feel like saying. Oh, well, thank, thank you, Azul. That was so beautiful. So beautiful, you know, it just, it just I, I heard this in a way I've never heard it before. So I appreciate that. And um, I'm sure there's some people here who would like to speak with you. And if you would like to talk with Azul, just uh, raise your hand and um, I'll unmute you. And uh, the floor is open. Thank you, Tom. Thanks so much. And then we've got, um, hang on a second, Bruce. Go ahead, Bruce. You can unmute yourself. Yeah, thank you, Azul. Um, do you uh, 
in your times of letting go of your thinking, just allow for the wisdom to surface? Or do you look outside of yourself to any other entity or any other person to bring that wisdom? I, I just, I, I feel and I believe and I experience that wisdom is inside everybody. And that our job is just to drop what's not working out and wisdom will show up for me through me. Now, sometimes I, I, I have insights and I realize stuff and other times I'm listening to a webinar or to a podcast or whatever. And whatever they are sharing wakes up things in me and that help me see more. But at the same time, you know, the, the wonderful thing of this understanding is knowing that nobody knows more than others. We all have access to the same source of wisdom. And when, you know, when we start in this understanding, usually all of us start consuming lots of material. Like, let's listen every podcast, every webinar I want to show and blah, 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 blah. And that's just a part of the initial excitement. But then there's a moment where we need to stop consuming and start being more with ourselves and just being quiet and, and still. And we are all being mentored by, by wisdom, by life. And that mentoring can come through a practitioner saying something, a, stra a stranger saying something at the bus station, you just watering your plants in your garden and realizing that it's everywhere. So there's no need to look outside. I don't know if that answers your question, Bruce. Yeah, I think it does that you're trusting the process and not using anything outside of yourself to leverage the process that the leverage comes from just allowing and accepting and surrendering and how it manifests or what direction it comes from will be unfolded unto you. Exactly, yeah. It's more than, you know what I see is like, let's say how a cut on, on my hand, okay? And it's bleeding. And what I realize is that I have been touching the cut, you know, and like scratching it, you know, and reinforcing it. And once I realize, oh my God, what I'm doing. So I just stop doing that. And my body starts healing itself. I may need to go and see a doctor or maybe not. I don't know. I will know at that moment. But my body has the capacity to go in back to its original shape so it can take sometimes i i see things through a process and other times it's just one thought and i'm realizing something huge for me so it's it's very personal there are no recipes and it could take a blink of an eye or some years to see stuff but it's more about how open we are and how willing we are I, I needed to be really open and willing to let go the identity I created as a victim. I needed to be really ready to let that go. Thank you, Bruce. Thanks so much. Well, as well as, as we're waiting for other people to to perhaps have a question, um, can you share a little bit about what it has been like for you to become someone who who shares this understanding with other people? <laughs> yes, yes. Um, the reason I'm sharing this understanding is because this information changed my life, and I want it to be available for everybody. That's. Uh, one of the reasons why I translate books into Spanish. I, I was a former coach in, different, in a different perspective. And I was also a, um, 
the primary school teacher. And I remember the first time I was in a Zoom call, uh, it was a Zoom call with uh, Rohini and Elsie Spiddle. And it was like the first time I was in Zoom and, and English is not my first language, as you can see. And I remember when, when Rohini said, explaining how to raise your hand in case somebody uh, was, I know, experienced the first Zoom call. And I listened to the whole explanation and look at where is the button to raise your hand so I don't press it. What happened was that by mistake, I, I pressed the button and, and I didn't realize. And like one hour and a half after the call, I, I was listening, but I switched the screen. So I, I was kind of listening and, and, and correcting um, my children's work, you know, in, in internet. And then I hear, Azul, you raised your hand, you want to open your mic. And I was like, oh my God, I, I wanted like to just close my, my network or like, I, I freaked out, I freaked out. Um, but I made it to say a few words and just acknowledge Elsie for what she was sharing. And I remember I said to my husband, I don't know these people, how do they do it? You know, to just talk with strangers about this understanding about that, ah, that's not for me. I'm, I'm not brave enough, blah, 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 blah. That was part of my identity. And, and now I'm, I'm, it's not the opposite. It's not that like, I'm the greatest coach. I'm going to share this so brilliantly. No, 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 no. Not at all. But there is something I know. I know how to show up with the best possible feeling and allow wisdom to guide me of what I have to share. When I have to to like send uh, to the TPTC the topic of the webinar, they were asking me like one month or two months before, I think. And I was like, I don't know. I, I, I it, it has to come to me. And I think three weeks before this date, I just thought, okay, I have to talk about this because really I'm living from that space of, I will know when I know. And I know it sounds kind of crazy for other people, but it's the way it works because every time I think I know this is what I'm going to do, guess what? Life shows up and things happened. And now I, I can have a more peaceful life when, when life is guiding me about this is what you need to do in this way. It's not about trusting. It's about putting it to the test and see what happens. So that's why I was saying it's important for me to be in this webinar because it's like the official, the official, you know, the 3PGC webinar in English. But more on that, because I felt so grateful when I was watching all those webinars in the 3PGC in the YouTube channel and they changed my life. And I want to leave here my love, you know, my heart for whoever is watching this recording tomorrow, 10 years from now. I don't know, maybe my daughter, when she's in her 20s, she's five years old now, I don't know. But I just want to give back what I have received. So. This was a full transformation. I wasn't expecting this, Tom. <laughs> <laughs> That's great. And uh, we'll go to uh, to um, Ellen now, and I'll just. Hello, Azul and everyone. Hi, Ellen. I'm really moved at your story, the way you talk about your past, it's obvious that this understanding has transformed and healed that. And I, I just want to highlight that for all of us. Like the way you spoke about it the energy of what happened is not there. The energy of who you are is here. And that's a gift for all of us. Thank you. Thanks so much, Ellen. You're going to make me cry. I am. I'm crying for both of us. It's okay. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's that's the main thing that I like. 
this understanding really changed my life and and that was that is why I, I feel like I want to just scream it in the streets you know to all these all of us adults that had a tough beginning we can have a wonderful loving healthy life it's right here it's right here it's not an objective it's right here at this moment and it's already happening because even when i was attached to my stories there were moments during the day when i was feeling completely okay safe and calm i thought those were the exceptions you know like bubbles of happiness and no 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 that's the truth that's when i'm awake Thank you, Ben. Thanks so much. Marlene? Oh, you're muted. Well, I've been invited to be unmuted. Okay, thanks, Tom. Um, thank you for the reminder that this is, um, you know, what we might call a work in progress. Um, I think when I came to this understanding, I was sort of hoping and praying for the you know, the big insight and somehow I'd be magically transformed and, and uh, be able to release all of my insecurities and doubt. And so I've had, you know, sort of bigger and smaller insights, but, but it's, it's, you know, like your metaphor of the, you know, moving the pans, it's like we can kind of innocently and unknowingly kind of fall back into those old patterns and those old, you know, habits of thinking and, and, um, you know, if it weren't for our, um, you know, the feedback of our, of our feeling states, it would, that would feel kind of like normal and maybe even true. So, yeah. So just thank you for the reminder that it's, we're always, um, we're always learning and growing and, and as, you know, as life unfolds. Thank you, Marlene. Thank you. You remind me that I had this thought for a long time that when I started in, in this understanding and I was moving through everything, like it says something like this, when my grounding is deep enough, I won't be experiencing sadness or anger or anything. I would be walking over waters. Uh, I would be like, my life would be fantastic, like Instagram life, you know, and I'm sure that uh, Deacon never gets angry. Mavis never gets angry. Mikey Neil never gets frustrated. Like I, I, I want to be in that cloud with all of the... I, not true, not true. We, they are human beings. We are human beings and we are here to experience the fullness of life. The difference is that we can learn how not to create extra suffering. With the example of the cat in my hand, I can get a cat in my hand, it's there, it's something that happened. I can create a lot of meaning out of it. And I can scrub it, or I can allow it to just be healed and let the experience go. So I would say that our grounding is always deep because it's not, it's not a race. There are no levels of understanding. It's what I can see. Can I see my thinking in action? Is my life feeling a little bit lighter than before? I am creating healthier relationships. I am having healthier behaviors with myself. Because that's also like when you realize, oh, that race of becoming somebody, you know, becoming somebody healthy, becoming somebody calm, that's another story. That's another story that we used to compare. Okay, this is what I should be. This is what I am. Mm, no, yeah. Mm, mm, mm. More stories. What are you hearing in this? <laughs> A lot of stories. <laughs> um, you know, how we have a tendency to to want to make meaning of something or, or explain something or, or, um, mm -hmm. and, 
it and not seeing it that's just more we're just kind of piling up to thinking higher and deeper and and uh creating even more confusion or even more distress or yeah so yeah it's it's like taking the taking taking our hands off just take your hands off and let it um let it um, move through or let it you know resolve itself yeah yeah and being conscious that you know what i'm seeing i'm seeing like we are more like a river that has a constant flow of water now sometimes the water is crystal clear other times the water is like brown or gray or green or crystal clear again more water less water but the river is not judging itself like oh my god what kind of river i am like run water now no it's just a river it's a strain of like water and we are a strain of consciousness and we are not in charge of what thoughts we have we don't need to know what thoughts are we having we just need to be awake to the feeling of our thinking and knowing that we are everything Thank you. Thank you, Marlene. Dominic? Yeah. Yeah. Hello. Can you hear me? Yeah. Yeah, okay. Um, yeah, first of all, thank you to share your story. Um, I also got in touch with it. I, I could feel it and I was like, wow, thanks for that. I have a question because I had an accident like four weeks ago. And, you know, I, I moved to Spain. I was really happy. I was on a scooter with a kid and then the kid fell down so it, it was the the feet of the kid and he fell down so we are falling down and i hit the face with my face the street first so it was a big accident and one of my friends not two of my friends they said your soul created it so think about it what what do you create and i was like what <laughs> what really so I wanted to ask you, what do you think about this with your past and if you or your soul create this? So do you think there is a connection of consciousness or soul? And uh, yeah, that's it. Just just a few have a thought about it. Okay. Okay. I can, I can give you my, my personal opinion. I, yeah. I don't have the truth about it. Yeah. You know, when I, before finding the, the understanding, I was always like related to self-development. So we all have been, you know, in the law of attraction, what you create with your thinking, blah, blah, blah. And I don't know about you, when, but when, when I was involved in these things that you create with your thinking and every time I had a kind of negative thought, I was freaking out. Oh my God, what I'm creating with this. You know, like I have to delete, 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 blah, 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 blah. Right now, what I feel is that we create our experience of life with our thinking. In the way that an accident happens. Uh, uh, that's the truth. That's neutral information, okay? There was an accident. Now I can create a story. Oh my God, I have some clumsy, it's my fault, blah, 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 blah. And then like diminish my my self-esteem or like taking certain decisions and not our other decisions another person could go there was an accident oh my god what's the government doing about all of these i'm sure they should have safety tips or blah 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 and get angry other person get, can get depressed other person uh, that love i know um, dangerous sports could be yeah yeah you know what just happened that was crazy blah 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 That's what I trying to say when I say experience of life. Life happens and I create the way I experience what happened. Because if not, if everything I think just manifested, oh my God, the world could be in great danger sometimes and other times this would be a paradise. 
So I I wouldn't say, first of all, I don't believe we create exactly what the events that are happening, but I'm not God, the universe, I may be wrong, I don't know. But something I will ask you is, when you receive such a comment, how did you felt? Did you feel like, ha, ah, yeah, I can hear some truth in it? Or did you feel like distort? Yeah, now, what... at the first, you know, at the, at the first moment, it was like, well, yeah, maybe it's right. And then at the second moment, it was like, come on, I had a fucking accident right now. How can you be like this? I mean, say sorry for it or say or send some flowers. You know, it was like, what? I created it. My soul created it. And I have to think about it. What the hell is going on with you? It's like, no way. I would not do it. <laughs> yeah. Hmm. <laughs> so, so what I notice in myself is that when I um, hear something and, and there is some truth in it, I, I, it's like my body knows. It's like, yeah, you know, it's like, and when I hear something that is not truth, I just get a like a fuse signal, you know, like, oh, something is not. But in any case, Going back to what they say and the comment and what kind of feeling is creating for you? And there's where you have your decision. How would you like to feel? Yeah, thanks for that. Yeah, I just wanted to know what, what do you think about it and if you have this feeling and yeah, thank you. <laughs> thank you, thanks for sharing. Peter. Thanks, Tom. Uh, as well, um, first of all, thank you very much for the session. I look, you said something earlier on um, that what you do know is how to bring a beautiful feeling or to show up with a beautiful feeling. And that's what I've been experiencing during the session. So thank you. Um, I work as a coach, and you mentioned that you'd worked as a coach with a different from mm -hmm. a different perspective prior to getting this understanding. So if you're still working as a coach, I'm curious to hear maybe an example or some way that your coaching approach has changed since you came into this understanding. Okay, perfect. Wonderful question. Before, in my, my former perspective as being a coach was my client had problems. I need to figure it out how to help him to solve those problems. And I have to bring tips and techniques and action plans and accountability. And if they achieve the results, it's because I'm a wonderful coach. If they don't achieve the results, it's because I'm terrible. And I need to keep like be learning techniques all the time because I want to be like a professional in my career, blah, 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 blah. That's one perspective. I, I, I am a, a coach right now and I have clients and I work through these three principles understanding. The difference would be that when I, I am with a client, I am completely aware that they can be facing extreme challenges and I know I'm here just to create a loving container where they can wake up to their connection with the wisdom and found whatever they need to do in order to sort this challenge and start creating a life that they love. I have been coaching several people that had like traumatic issues in their past, but I also coached people that was facing current traumatic events. In fact, in I, I have one wonderful, wonderful client. She's a teenager and she has um her parents are like battling with addictions and she has been in one home or the other home and I have 
I had sessions with her where I could hear the screaming from one of their parents using substances during our session. Just like when real life is happening, can I say to them, oh, it's just your thinking. No, I wouldn't say that to nobody because it's very dismissive. Is it true that with our thinking, we can add more suffering? Yes. Now, let me tell you, at first with her, there was a lot of deep listening where we can be connected. And, I, and she really needed somebody to just listen what was happening from heart to heart. Not listening to find a diagnosis, not listening to find what part of these three principles of understanding she's not seeing, just listening to be with her heart to heart. And I'm telling you, I have learned from her so much. She started sharing things with me like, hey, Azul, I realize, you know what? When I'm depressed, when I started working with her, she tried to commit suicide. That's why I was hired. And she was at hospital and she was intensive care unit for a long time. And then I started working with her. And then in that session, not in the first one, I mean, several sessions. And then one day she told me that I realized I, I do things to keep myself sad and depressed. You know, like I, some thinking shows up about my lousy life and then I play certain type of music and I watch certain type of movies and then I call my friends and complain and then I... And she said, so I decided to stop doing that and see what happens. <laughs> okay. Later in another session, she told me, you know what? I realized I can be happy even if they are behaving that way. It's not like impossible. 14, 14 years old. Can you imagine realizing that at 14 years old? I wasn't creating a plan for her. Okay, this is what she needs to see. This is what she needs to do. I was just there with her, knowing that she has wisdom inside. And pointing her all the time for her to see that, can you see how our thinking creates our experience of life? And she started seeing that more. And then she started coaching her friends, you know, like having conversations. And it was like, wow. I wish she desires to become a coach because she would be like so amazing, helping so many people. And how that ended up, um, she's still facing challenges in her family life. But when when I started that happening and, and she was like suffering at school, she wasn't in the classes, she was crying in the bathroom, you know, she was like really not having a good life. Now she's engaged in school, she's getting awesome grades, she's winning like singing contests, she learned to play guitar, she's reading books, she's planning travel, she's thinking about her life when she becomes an adult. Stuff is still happening, challenging stuff. But she stopped creating extra suffering believing every thought she has. So I show up to each session and I don't have a plan. I'm just show up with the best possible feeling. And I listen to her because when I'm listening to her, I listen to her own wisdom and her own wisdom will guide me to what is needed in that session. That's what changed it. I don't know if, if it's understandable. It is, um, and I'm smiling as I listen to you, uh, because what I've found is I've been working as a coach since 2004, and I only came across this understanding in January of last year. And um, I'd sometimes joke with some of my colleagues about needing to have a plan. Mm -hmm. And I find that this understanding completely legitimizes the exact opposite, like you've just said, not having a plan and trusting and opening 
And I loved what you said earlier on about being with the unknown to see what might emerge. And that seems to me to be very relevant to the way you've just described your coaching approach. So yes, it does make sense. And thank you. Thanks so much, Peter. Something I would like to clarify is that because it was, uh, I, I was confused with that at the beginning. Like there is having plans and techniques and not having a plan and just showing up with the best possible feeling. And with the intention of pointing to the nature of thought, the nature of wisdom. Yeah. And for some time I thought I couldn't offer anything practical. I couldn't say anything that is down to earth. And that was a mistake from me. I, I Now when I'm coaching somebody, if a question comes to me, I can feel if it's a question that's coming from my intellect or if it's coming really from wisdom, and I can ask a question. I may have the idea to like ask them to do uh, something specific. Like what happens if you have a conversation with that person or uh, watch this movie or listen to that thing? But I check where is that coming from? Is it coming from really wisdom? It's just showing up or I have an agenda? Yeah. Just to clarify that because for me it was show up with no plan and then yeah. thank you. Thank you very much, I really appreciate it. Very helpful. Thank you. Tracy. Hi, Tracy. Hello. Um, can you guys hear me? I've got my earpads in. Is it mm -hmm. working? Yeah. Okay, cool. Um, oh gosh. <laughs> there was a moment when um oh, I didn't think I was gonna do that. Um when you're talking about seeing yourself as a child again like in your adult form, and then you look back and saw the child that you once was, or still are. And I did that last year. Um, I've got a 14 year old daughter and I seem to be going through things in my childhood every time she turns a new age. It's just been the two of us. Um, I've parented her all on my own. Um, and every time she hits a new age, I'm back in that mindset sometimes or I'm having thoughts or memories from from those days and today just one day I just realized that um everything that's happened in my adulthood from from leaving home to, to university to where I am today um has changed me and life has changed me but I'm now remembering that I was once that little girl who had all the dreams, um, all the enthusiasm, you know, innocence as well. And life just sort of takes that away from you sometimes and you sort of make some decisions. Um, so that really touched me. And so I just wanted to thank you for, um, yeah, bringing that point across. Because as soon as you said that, I was like, bang, yeah. There's still that inner child and everything we've created in our minds about that inner child or being further from that inner child is not true. We're still there. There's still that person inside. So, yeah, thank you. Thank you, Tracy. You know, you reminded me, my, my daughter is five years old and... When she was a baby, it's not happening anymore now, but I remember watching her, you know, when she was one year old and two years old and making comparisons between her childhood, my childhood. And yeah, and it was like, uh, but what I was able to see that was that innocently, I was torturing myself. Mm -hmm. When I'm at her birthday party, and uh, my mind brings memory of me not having any birthday party or whatever, blah, blah, blah. I'm not there. I'm not present at what's happening. I'm in my, the resemblance of my imagination. So when I found myself there, I just go back to what's real, what's present. 
that's here, where I am, I'm here. And other times, I'm, I don't know, this is going to sound so funny. I'm buying, you know, clothes for her, socks and underwear and whatever. So she has everything and all of that. And then I see, I don't know, some funny socks, you know, for grown-ups with little drawings or flowers or, and I always wanted something like that. Then I get it. I get it now. You know, I give it to myself. It's not like what I didn't have will never happen to me. I realize, oh my God, I have these two hands to give me everything that I wish for at any moment. I don't need to keep feeding the story of the lack of what wasn't there. I can start creating of, oh my God, I have so many ways of loving myself. Yeah, I am, I'm new to free principles. Uh, I think I came across it October last year. And um, I, I go to a women's group uh, every other week. And I just wish in the UK, this was more available because I'm seeing these women and and I just know if they changed the way they saw their trauma in the past, still recognizing it for where it was, but try not to be that person that you was then. And I just wish, yeah, I really wish the three principles was just something that, I mean, well, Sidney Banks was trying to do it from, you know, from the moment he realized it, he was trying to get this uh, into the, our school. And I mean, he's Scottish, he's British. Mm -hmm. And, but in the UK, it's it's so not a, available at much I've gone through so much cognitive cognitive therapy which at the time helped it did but it gave me no tools to, to use when the moments got bad again or the thoughts got carried away again it gave me no grounding to come back to and in the few sort of six months or so that I've uh it, tuning into the free principles I think only sort of the last couple of weeks have I realized I can take that from what I've heard Sydney say or I hear in your in people's webinars I can now oh I can see this moment and I know now not to let that thought make an action um I, I, I will say that. That. Yeah, Tracy, if, you, if you want, send me an email and I will point you. There are so many resources in the UK. Mm. Maybe I'm, I'm based in Cornwall. I'm uh, sorry, I'm based in Cornwall, so I don't know if that's what's making my network oh. a little bit smaller. Okay. Um, but yeah, it's 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 sort of like a uh, yeah, like I say, like literally, like just two weeks ago. Um, I'm, I'm recalling moments of how I can actually process what I'm thinking or what I'm seeing or just be calmer about it rather than going into a defense mode that's my my that's been my tool for too long is going into this defense and I now know I don't need to be defensive anymore I don't need to prove myself to anybody um I can just be and um yeah and we will fantastic. be defensive at some times we will get defensive it's a habit, mm. but we will notice and we will let it go. And then again, yeah. it's not it's not because easily we can be hard on ourselves. You know, oh, I know this. I shouldn't give defense. Well, things that happen. It's just internal weather. And sometimes we go to old habits. If you want, send me an yeah. email and I can send you a list of resources that you can yeah. have in, in the UK. Okay. Yeah. okay? Yeah. Can I suggest so much for sharing, Tracy? Can I suggest something else? Um, Tracy, when I first came into the understanding, I didn't know what I was doing, but I just took a book. I just took a book and created a group. And, yeah. and you know, you could take, you could take, um, you know, um, the missing link book. Yeah, I, I'm actually trying to, to do that with the Enchanted Gardener. Um, my neighbor, uh, she's trying to join this group. She's really keen to join it. And I'm, I'm kind of just sort of just trying to put the feathers out there, but um, not many people in the UK know what the free principles is and 
um, or how it can be so helpful outside of our usual counselling measures. Um, but that's what I wanted to do is just just have a book club and just read the book together. And Mavis Kahn's book, It's That Simple, is a great book for that because it's 15 or 16 different letters. And and mm -hmm. you don't have to, you don't, you don't, there's no, or, there's no real order to it. So you can, so you can, if someone comes and then misses. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you for letting Sorry, me what share. Book was that? Sorry, what book was that? It's that simple. I just, okay. pasted, okay. I yeah. just pasted the link on the, on the chat. Oh, fantastic. Yeah. I thought she meant it was that simple. <laughs> I was just like, okay. Yeah. Mavis yeah, is my, you. my mentor and I, and I work with her. So it's, what can I say? But the book is called, is that simple? Because we have, we can have the tendency to make everything complicated and deep, you know, like many, many years, but it's very simple. So one more thing. I'm so sorry, everybody. Um, I don't get to talk to too many people, too many people about this. Um, but yeah, I put something up. I quoted one of Sydney Banks's statements. Um, I can't remember which one it was. I literally just typed it from from one of his, um, you know, the videos, and I put it on my Facebook. And my neighbour um, across from me, she said, "It can't be that simple." <laughs> yeah. And I just replied, "I think it is." I really do. And now she's she's catching on to it now. So it's just lovely. So yeah. 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 Thank you. I'll shut up now. <laughs> Thank you, Tracy. And I know I, I'm sure you all know, but there's an official YouTube channel for all Sydney Banks videos now yeah. and it's being translated yeah. in many languages. But now if you if you like rewatch those videos, he says a lot about it's just there, it's right there. You know, it's like yeah. Yeah, it went into the yeah. simplicity of this understanding. Yeah, yeah. So thanks, yeah. Tracy. Yeah, thank you. Thank you. I've got one question, uh, if you don't mind, because somebody yeah. sent me the message like in a private mode, saying, "Can you talk about victimhood, the connection between thought, feeling, feeling sorry for yourself?" I'm just going to address this quickly because yeah, I know you. Yeah, take your time. As well. The connection between thought and feeling, thought and feeling is exactly the same thing. It's not like thought are connected to feeling. A thought is a feeling. It's like a lemon that would taste. You know, if you eat a lemon, you will have lemon taste. Each thought has a feeling. There's no space between one and the other. Now, feeling sorry for myself, I have a master's degree on that. Um, and it's, it's just a habit. It's a habit that it started as a way of being kind to myself. You know, when I was a child, I was feeling sorry for myself and it was kind of the only space of compassion I could have at that moment. So it, it created a habit like, that, that showed up and I felt safe and for me, then I wouldn't exposed to challenges so I don't get hurt. And so when the thought shows up, you know, I'm sorry for myself. There's a feeling. It's not really nice at all. Now, let's say the thought showed up and I was completely like, not really paying attention. I, I, I was unaware, but I've got a feeling. Now, what I do is that I just allow the feeling to be with me as a sensation. I thought the sensation of being hungry or, or being cold was something different than emotions. And what I'm seeing more is that emotions are a sensation and I can follow that sensation in my body. I feel sorry for myself. I feel sadness. I can feel the sadness. I can notice the sadness. I'm not feeling the sadness saying internally, oh yeah, I'm sad because this happened, that happened. No, I'm just feeling the sensation. Where do I feel it? How do I feel it? And when I pay attention to the sensation, what happens 100% of the times is that the feeling gets, the sensation gets lighter and lighter and lighter. And I go back to a normal, peaceful feeling calmness 
And now that I know that I have the habit of feeling sorry for myself, of entertaining that thought, when the thought shows up, here I go again, okay? Again, trying to take the, the pan from the left side when it's in the right side. So I just reaccommodate my attention. I don't start thinking, oh my God, this thought again, I, I thought I was over it. I don't go, I hate to have this thought. I don't go, I feel so sorry. I'm having this thinking of feeling sorry for myself. I just let that thought pass by as a cloud. And the more I do that, the less, less frequent it comes. But there's nothing to fix. I'm okay. Even if I fall into the illusion of validating that thought, I will feel at some point so terrible, I will end up crying. And guess what happens after crying? I feel better. So it's like playing in a children's playground that is so safe that even if you fall some kind of crazy way, you will be okay. Thank you. Yeah. Well, thank you so much, Azul. This has just been a beautiful, beautiful time with you. So insightful. And thank you for everyone who has participated, whether you've asked questions or you just showed up or you're watching this uh, as a replay. And we'll, we'll, we'll have some more information about Azul on the YouTube page. And I also just wanted to remind you, we'll be having our next webinar on Tuesday, May 9th, 2 p.m. Eastern time with Natasha Swardloff. And she's going to be talking about awakening to our true nature. So hope to see you there. Thanks again, everyone, so much. And um, Azul, all the best. And um, we'll, we'll see you next time. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Bye. Thank you, everybody. Such a pleasure having you all. Thank you. Bye-bye. Thank you. Bye-bye. Bye. Thank you so much. Bye-bye. Thank you.